Hello, it's March the 28th, 2022, and this is your Lenten devotional for today. And of course, we're going through Henry Nouwen's book on discernment, as we talk about discernment and how it, uh, how we discern God's will, our path, discern what the world is up to, kind of discern God's presence all around us. And today, he talks about, um, read the book of nature. And as many of you know, um, I'm not much of an outdoorsy kind of guy. Camping just doesn't do it for me. It's like a joke about people pay big bucks to live like a homeless person for a week or two. So the whole nature thing is, uh, I wouldn't say it's lost on me, but I don't appreciate it as much as many other people do. And I've been challenged on this fairly recently through my uh, the work I'm doing with the indigenous folks of the uh, elder-led um, relations circle, as well as some of the wrestling with the truths of colonialism, just getting a better understanding of the role nature and creation play in the lives of the indigenous people of the land. There's a section, and I think it was in the book, uh, Braiding Sweetgrass, where they're talking about uh, listening to creation, listening to nature, listening to you know, the world that God created, because nature had been here a lot longer than human beings. And so as human beings, we can glean some learning and some wisdom from creation, from nature, if we listen and perceive closely enough. And now one seems to uh, agree with that, or at least be on the same page, as it were. Because he says, God's first language is nature. And he goes on to say this, Dutch is my first language. He says, yet I write often in English. It can be said that God's first language is nature, even if God is revealed through our ancient and enduring spiritual texts. You can read God's ways and will in the season, seasonal patterns and cycles of creation, life and death, planting and harvest, waiting for and basking in new life and resurrection. Then he quotes scripture. Very truly I tell you, Unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. That was the Gospel of John, chapter 12, verse 24. But for us as Protestants, this is new, at least me for a Protestant, this is fairly new. Because uh, classical Protestant orthodoxy said God is only revealed in Scripture, only revealed in Jesus. And Jesus is the Word of God, and Scripture is being real uh, revelation of God. And that creation is fallen. So how can you see God in a fallen creation? And this is where our indigenous friends and our Roman Catholic siblings, especially in the area of Roman Catholic or Roman uh, mysticism, um, which ironically sees God in everything. God see, sees God in all, everything God has created, including and especially nature. That uh, people go to the woods, they go to the mountains, they go to the ocean, and many people say they experience God very directly, very concretely there in the midst of God's good creation. And the editors recommend this as a uh, exercise for deeper discernment. It says, walk with Jesus on the earth, drive down a dirt road, get out of the car, walk on the dust of the earth as Jesus did. Then pick one of the parables found in Mark chapter 4. Read it outside and listen to what God might be saying through both the book of the Bible and the book of nature. Reflect on how you discern differently when you read these two books together. Interesting challenge. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, we give you thanks that we can perceive you in nature. We give you thanks that you reveal yourself in all that you have created. Give us eyes to see, ears to hear, mouths to taste, noses to smell, and every other sense that we have to perceive you as we walk through your creation in faithfulness. This we pray in Jesus' name, who was present at the heart of creation. Amen.